Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now it's that time of month and we've got to start seeding again. So what we're going to be doing here is doing an experiment on the moon cycles and um, as a part of that calendar this week is the the week to start planting out. So what we've got is I've got the the, the no um, till disc seeder um, running around and we're planting out some extra plantain um, this this month but what I wanted to do was show you because um, I've been waiting for the radishes if you can remember from last month I've just found a section here where um, they've actually started to sprout and they've gone beyond their germination leaves so they've got a couple of extra leaves but I wanted to sh what I wanted to show you was actually the spacings um, about how that all came together so what I'll do is I'll get the camera we'll come and have a look at this little area here and see those radishes coming up so that you can actually start seeing about the placement of the seeds from the unit and from what I can see yeah it's a little bit random but I mean that's just um, sort of nature at its best isn't it so anyway look I'll get a few things sorted out I'll come and find you and I'll see you soon all right so as you can see here you can see the the little radishes coming up all the way through there you know so I'm pretty happy with how this has all sort of come about now that the um, We've had, yeah, we've had a little bit of rain. We've had about five mil. Um, and this is also downside of one of my little key line cuts. So as you can see, you can still see, you know, last month where we, we planted these out. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm pretty pumped up about how this has all come together. So um, th this little section here, now, what I'm thinking really at the end of the day is that the, this is sort of like a, a shaded section um, and downside, like I said, downside of the key line cuts. Now, the other spots where, where it was, was dry, five mil hasn't quite cut it out for those areas. So we're just gonna have to wait for a little bit more rain um, to start coming through and we're expected you know anywhere between five and ten mil next week so as a part of you know seeding this week um, just off the new moon and trying this example um, or a little experiment with planting on um, the moon cycles it could work all, out all right so anyway look i'll jump back onto the tractor and keep on going and um and then we can see oh you can see here there's the the key line cut now we've had the cows in here, so that's trampled all, all down. I think I mentioned that last time. But um, yeah, but it's good to see some of those radishes coming through now. Um, you know, you're looking about that 150 mil spacings. So, all oh, sweet, mate, how exciting. So the grass is still looking fairly green. Um, and this is all, like I said, even up here, I've got a key line cut running through. Um, but if you go down to see where I've got some spots further down which have already browned off and it's interesting because I haven't I didn't put the key line cut in that area <laughs> so the water wasn't to be hot held up it was sort of just soaked in but um, anyway we, we live and learn all right I'll get back on that tractor and I'll come and find you and I'll see you soon all right well I've finished the first hopper um, with the plantain now the plantains a lot smaller in seed um, than the the radishes now while I was driving around I was sort of thinking to myself now I don't know if the moon cycles are really going to work that well they might be great for vegetables and things like that in reference to where you can then add water and, and all those sort of things to get the germination process started but here out in the, in the pastures, what I'm thinking, and this is me just sort of sitting on the tractor doing not, nothing much else, <laughs> but I've got bags of seed as an example that I would leave in the shed. And what's really the difference between leaving the, the bags of seed in the shed 
or leaving them in the pastures and waiting for that rain to come through for germination. Now, I think that you, you, there will be some sort of natural loss. Um, when I say natural loss, you know, there, there might be mice running around in the pastures and, and picking up seeds or whatever it may be. But I think I'm hedging my bets probably and swaying to the idea of actually leaving seeds in the pastures. Because as, as I was going through, I've got some other natural grasses that are here that have are seeding. Now, and I was thinking to myself, well, what actually happens to them? So, you know, they would just fall onto the ground and when the, the conditions are right, they would then germinate. Um, yes, there would be losses, um, but I'm thinking to myself that would the winds outweigh the losses? And, and I'm thinking to myself that I reckon that that, that probably would. Um, you know, it's one of those sort of things that I would almost be saying that I, I think I would prefer, yes, I would prefer the seed to be in the ground and wait for those conditions to come on. Now, in reference to the moon cycles, well, I can't then run over and start watering these seeds based on the the moon cycle. The, the only thing that the moon cycle is telling me is that for seed germination that the water content in the soil is higher at this particular week than any others which you know to me at the end of the day is I'm just hedging my bets again saying right well that's obviously going to be something that would benefit me but also what I'm finding is that I can plan you know I don't have to be out here in the pastures um, every week putting in seeds I'm only doing it once a month and I put a couple of bags in this and I run around and, and look at our experiments and see what's going on what works and what not what what not and what not or what isn't working jeez but something I must have sunstroke <laughs> but um, but anyway look I'm thinking that you know also too certainly what would be a benefit and if I'm looking at the whole idea of the pastures being a productive um, sort of resource it's going to take time and and I was thinking again about what we've done in the chicken coop and that's taken three years but I've got animals running in there I've got lots of nitrogen and things like that running through so then I was thinking to myself again well really what I need to do is actually put a green cover green manure or green cover crop over these pastures get it to the point where they're just about to flower and then send the cows in and what I'm thinking there is that the I'll just replace what the chickens do in the chicken coop with the cows out here um, obviously on bigger scale but <laughs> you know it's is it really that much different oh, you know, I don't know you know I think this is one of the, the the beauties of it all is that you know I'm a first time or yeah first time farmer I've only been really farming for you know, I think let's say two years, the first two years being here was just too much fun and, and having a lots of making mistakes and, you know, going, wow, what's that do and what's this and everything else. So let's say I'm, I've been a farmer for two years. I don't have any pre-described ideas about what they used to do in the past or what normal farmers do. Um, so anyway, look, I, <laughs> I think that, you know, if I was to look at this as a whole, you know, and put a, a green manure cover crop on, I can certainly see the benefits. Um, get that nitrogen and potassium and, and phosphorus back into those soils naturally. Replace the chickens with the cows. Um, you know, but obviously that's that's a mass expense and and time. You know, but I can see the benefits. I really, really can. Um, you know, what we're trying to do is eliminate bare soil, and I think you know you can see behind me here I've got a track running across the dam now I can't prevent that I'm not going to try and cover that up um, but certainly in the pastures um, we're working really really hard um, with when we feed the cows or if I've got any weeds or grass clippings or whatever it may be loose I'll come out and put them over a dirt patch and, and try and keep that moisture content in but I suppose that you know we're talking about moisture content at the moment, what are we? We're, we're sort of coming in, yeah, late spring, early summer. Um, 
and the humidity is pretty much you know doesn't it's not existent compared to previous years so this is like I've been saying in previous videos that I think that the the dry is certainly coming and we need to prepare ourselves for that um, but it's the dew point that I'm sort of being really interested in and you know the, at, here in particular the dew point starting at around about 13 degrees you know 13 not quite 13 and a half but around about 13.2 I think it was this morning um, but the temperatures are getting to nine so you know I've, I'm getting a lot of morning dew um, come through which you know I'm hoping that you know I, I don't know how to measure that um, as a part of moisture into the soil but all I know is that um, you know when I jump out in the mornings um, and leave quite early that when I you know I've got wet boots and I'm like oh okay and I never really thought about it and um, but look I think that that dew point is certainly going to help especially with keeping the grass longer and as a part of your rotational grazing if you've got more surface area coming from the ground and the dew coming through that's going to have to hit the soil at some point run down the grass leaves and into that soil so there's certainly a benefit there for, to keeping your your grasses longer um, but you know is that really going to be super beneficial well you know by the time that like you know the cows have just left this paddock um, and they're over the far one at the moment um, and they're just about to come back into another so this is this paddock here has got 13 weeks to recover um, and do its thing and still you know I'm thinking that you know just looking around the cows have taken the best bits they've left the the shitty bits um, you know and I'm looking probably about 75 mil something like that maybe a hundred mil in spots 200 in others so anyway you know life goes on <laughs> life goes on but here we are I wanted to do, sort of touch base with you again is that the the, the, the month had turned over it's now time to start planting in um, grass seeds again and we'll be doing this every month different varieties leaving up into different seasons I've got to race back and fill up the hopper one more time and so that gives me my my two bags um, and that's sort of what I've sort of budgeted on um, at, purely is just based on the experiments that we're doing we'll work out what what germinates well what doesn't and then we can start implementing that into the other paddocks so you know the paddocks over there are just going to have to rely on natural grass as we've been doing the previous years this is the worst one um, so this is what I really want to focus on so anyway busy busy times here at Fat Cow Farm so all about your seeding and you know trying to think about your moon cycles but you know I think that the point of this one was really do we leave the, the seeds in the in the in the barn or in the in the in the shed do we leave them in the ground and wait for those conditions well I'm almost thinking to myself now that I'm gonna wait and leave them in the, gr the ground and let them germinate when when the time comes so like and subscribe and I'll see you soon